On August 24, 1814, the British attacked Washington, D.C., setting fire to many public buildings and to a great symbol of the fragile republic, the President's House, what is today known as the White House. Marching from an earlier attack on Vladensburg, only five miles away from the capital city, Admiral Coburn and his British troops surrounded and pillaged the nation's capital during the ill-fated War of 1812. In the short time she had to escape capture by the British, one woman knew the importance of preserving the delicate nation's small history by saving many documents and historical artifacts, as well as having the famed Gilbert Stuart painting of George Washington removed from its frame before quickly evacuating the White House. That woman was the President Truss, now referred to as First Lady Dolly Payne Todd Madison. Her courageous actions to save a piece of the new nation's history became one of three key legacies Dolly Madison left to the people of America. As a skilled diplomat and hostess, Dolly established many American customs and legacies now utilized in today's politics, including learning to work through diverse issues in a bipartisan manner. She focused on American simplicity with traditional elegance that reflected the values of the new nation. Former First Lady Laura Bush stated, Dolly's skills as hostess help solidify our new nation's position as an independent democratic power, equal in sophistication to European monarchies. Dolly Madison set the social standards for future First Ladies to follow such as Eleanor Roosevelt and Jacqueline Kennedy. Dolly Madison was born in Guilford County, North Carolina on May 20, 1768, to Quaker parents. While Dolly was a young teenager, her father emancipated their slaves in 1783 and moved the family to Philadelphia. The family experienced financial hardship, and in order to keep an income for the family, Dolly's mother transformed their home into a boarding house for federal government officials temporarily residing in the capital city of Philadelphia. In 1790, Dolly married lawyer John Todd and gave birth to first son, John Payne Todd, in 1792, and a year later to William Temple Todd, after losing both her husband and youngest son during the 1793 yellow fever epidemic. Dolly, at the age of 26, met and married 43-year-old James Madison, father of the Constitution and Bill of Rights. When Thomas Jefferson was elected the third president of the nation, he chose James Madison to become his Secretary of State. Dolly was instantly placed in the national spotlight and performed the role as hostess for the White House for the widow Jefferson. In 1808, Madison was elected the nation's fourth president and Dolly was ready and willing to fulfill the job as First Lady of the White House. She really is the first First Lady of Washington, D.C. But in Washington, D.C., it's very raw, it's very new, and so she has a kind of expansiveness. She's the first, and in a first place, at a first time, and that means you can set patterns. She's setting a pattern for what is a Republican government and therefore what is a Republican social message. Everyone loved Dolly. There was something spectacular about the charming, beautiful woman who graced parties with the latest fashions from Paris. She set the style by popularizing the empire dress and made the head turban her trademark. Dolly greeted everyone with the same courtesy, whether the person was a farmer or a politician, a very ideal of a democracy. Dolly genuinely cared about people. Even Henry Clay, a prominent United States senator, commented, Everybody loves Mrs. Madison, to which Dolly replied, that's because Mrs. Madison loves everybody. Dolly hosted political gatherings called her Wednesday night drawing rooms, where statesmen and their families could talk about political issues under the attendance of their hostess, Mrs. Madison. Early Washington didn't have a lot of bureaucracy. Before Dolly's White House, there was no one place where all the members of government, let alone their families, could gather in one place. And so the early federal government was a very small, very weak, very shaky enterprise, and she helped bolster it. Her greatest legacy is this model of connection, empathy, that government and ruling is less about my side wins, your side loses, and rather working together. This marks her as a modern politician, the most modern of her time. Dolly created a White House for the American people. Madison appointed the duty of refurbishing the poorly decorated White House to Dolly. Assigning the entire regulation of the household 
to the First Lady was a clear indication of Madison's abiding confidence in his wife's capabilities, wrote Conover Hunt Jones, a scholar who researched the history of the Madison White House. Few American men of that era would have entrusted the task to a woman. Dolly worked with White House architect Benjamin Henry the Trobe in furnishing the presidential residence with American-made furniture, paintings, sculptures, curtains, ceramics, and silverware that displayed American scenes and accomplishments to inspire patriotism and create a legacy for the young nation. Dolly lived in a world that did not know how to acknowledge the female power she had, and her fame was played off as a symbol of domesticity, sociability, and Americanness, the very hallmarks of femininity. Dolly's actions embodied patriotism. She became an icon by the late 1800s and a pop culture figure in the 20th century. Even today, cakes, cigars, and ice cream bear her name. No greater act of devotion to her country could replace her courageous actions during the War of 1812, when Dolly stayed in Washington, D.C. until the very last possible moment, evacuating the White House and saving important American artifacts and the portrait of George Washington over the Madison's personal items and even her own life. Producing the letter years later to friend Margaret Bayard Smith, who wrote a biographical sketch on important people of the time, Dolly had been accused of possibly editing or improving the text to give a more visible patriotic account of the incident. Nevertheless, Dolly historians such as Holly Shulman state Dolly did save the Paris portrait. After Madison's second term, the couple retired to their Virginia home, Montpelier, where they continued to receive visitors. As Madison's health declined, Dolly never left his side. She assisted him in editing his papers that he hoped would secure a future source of income for Dolly when he died, as well as serving as a historical record for future generations. After James's death on June 28, 1836, Dolly continued to edit his papers, and eventually Congress bought the papers in two sets. Unable to keep Montpelier because of her son's excessive gambling and drinking debts, Dolly had to sell the mansion in addition to her slaves. She grew up with slaves, and then her father emancipated them. And then she didn't have slaves, and they became poorer. And I think she wanted to marry a Virginian the second time around. I think she liked having slaves. But at the same time, they were both a symbol of status and an actual possession of wealth, and they made your life a whole lot easier. And they were part of her life. That's how she grew up. I don't think she ever questioned seriously the institution of slavery. I don't care how much James Madison questioned it. When she sold on Pillier and she went to Washington, D.C. in 1844, she brought some of her slaves with her. And this is perhaps some of the most indicative part of the history that we have about her attitude towards slavery. Dolly's lack of action in emancipating her slaves shows the moral and practical dilemma facing slave owners during this time. Dolly moved back to Washington, D.C. with her sisters Anna and Lucy. In her old age, Dolly received many honors, including the benefit of franking privileges, allowing her to send mail using her signature instead of a stamp, participating in the laying of the Washington Monument cornerstone, witnessing Samuel Morse's transmission of his inaugural message by Morse code on May 24, 1844, and becoming the first person to send a personal message by telegraph that same day, as well as holding the highest political compliment ever paid to a woman of her time and being offered a lifetime seat in the House of Representatives. Her niece Anna Payne took care of Dolly in her deteriorating health. On July 12, 1849, Dolly passed away and was given the largest state funeral in Washington. President Zachary Taylor, the cabinet, and members of both houses of Congress participated in the funeral procession. Dolly's final resting place lies next to her beloved husband in the family cemetery at Montpelier. America's first lady, Dolly Payne Todd Madison, created legacies through her actions that exemplified the very American patriotism of the new republic her husband helped establish. Dolly understood the importance of preserving America's history and sense of identity, as well as promoting politics through cooperation. She left behind a legacy that captured America's simplicity coupled with traditional elegance that reflected the very values of the new nation that remain alive today.